So Betsy, do you want to start us off by sort of laying some groundwork for what gay and queer Berlin looked like leading into the time we're in in the play? Berlin looked gay and queer is basically the answer that to that. Yeah. I play Bots in A Bright Room Called Day. He is, uh, I mean, a very out gay man living in Berlin at this time and I think is very involved in that subculture. Berlin was this cultural sort of explosion of not only homosexuality, um, but self-expression in general. He is a representative of gay rights mm -hmm. from this period of time that we don't think about as having hosted some of the world's first gay rights movements. It was around this time in the early 1900s that a man named Max Hirschfeld created what would become the world's first basically gay rights activist group. Bots works for this institute providing abortions and uh, condoms. It's kind of like the Planned Parenthood I was just of say, Germany. Yes. There was absolutely a movement towards a cultural and governmental support and tolerance. And what happened when Hitler took the chancellorship was all of that came to a screeching halt. There are parts about this time in Germany that make me think immediately of 1960 San Francisco. That's like free love and yeah. nudism and self-expression and sexual expression. Right. And this was happening at that time. And then you have when Tony Kushner's writing A Bright Room Called Day in the late 80s, mm -hmm. early 90s, the ache, the yearn for someone to be fighting. Because he's writing in the time of the AIDS epidemic. And, you know, thinking about gay men living for today because no one's really on their side is absolutely resonant in this play. Working on this play routinely, you realize what a tapestry Kushner has woven. I don't want to go off on a huge tangent here, but I wonder- I may have jumped that ship. We done, we're sailing. Um, <laughs> 